can always catch up on YouTube. Um, you're from Germany. Oh, you're in the same time zone. Cool. I'm in the, the Netherlands. They're all either in the middle of classes or past midnight. <laughs> Okay, Dave. That's like right next door. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. No, she was... Uh, what? Jenner of Plum Feature and Increasingly Sadistic Smile. No, she was worth it. She was worth this. Five minutes from the border. Cool. Sometimes people just... I had to make sacrifices for the people they loved. That's just... That was just the way the world worked. That was not a smart choice, Hana. Right now, Gerard's dream is more important than some stupid tournament. Gerard would have wanted you to compete in the tournament. Or joining some stupid club. Gerard's dream and happiness were more important to me than... Than what? Than my own? No, that was silly. Anyways, the decision was already made. There was no point in wondering this. I want to go straight to Gerard's room and try... and try to give him Princess Pumpernickel, but as far as I knew, Shane would also be there. There was no way, what, there was no way I was going to risk running into Shane, not after what I just told him. Then I headed straight for the dorms. I could give Gerard the figure the, figure the next day during lunch. It would, would be no it would be no worse for wear. Besides, with the mood I was, the mood I was in, I just dragged George's happiness down. Every minute I had Pr Princess Pumpernickel out in the open was a moment of buzzing anxiety. Anxiety. Whoa. I cannot speak right now. I ran up the stairs as quickly and carefully as I could. Along the box, by my fingertips so my sweaty palms wouldn't damage the sides. To my great surprise, I made it to my room without incident. In fact, there was nobody even around to make a mess of things. I pulled out my keys and opened the door in the signs of the hall. Yay! I made it! I made it! Thank goodness! Maya wasn't around, so I set Princess Puppernickel on my desk and quickly took my bag and jacket. She was probably at practice or something. With my arms free, I stood in the middle of my room and spun around. It had to be a good place to put Princess Pumpernickel. One where she wouldn't be in danger of Mai's tendency to flip her hair immediately after washing it. Or of Mai's inability to eat ramen without spraying de detriment everywhere. A shelf built into the wall above my desk caught my eye. <laughs> Perfect! I pulled out my desk chair and very carefully removed a statue of a waving, a waving cat and blossom-shaped incense burner from the top. Then, just as carefully, I grabbed Princess Pumpernickel and placed her in the center of the shelf. There. That wasn't too eye-catching, right? Mai wouldn't notice her? I leaned back, squinting. But as I, as I did, something caught on the edge of my left sleeve. My arm was caught in front of me, and in an effort to not lose my balance, I swung backwards, arms pinwheeling in the, in the air. And then it happened. As I pulled my sleeve away from the shelf, the nail was caught on... The nail it was caught on came with it. The shelf tilted slightly to the side, and the left half swung towards the floor. The object stumbled from the sky in slow motion. My arms still attempting to catch my balance, but didn't respond quickly enough. I grabbed for Princess Pumpernickel, but ended up nabbing a small plastic frog in my hand. <laughs> no! I stumbled off the chair and... Whoa. I stumbled off the chair into the broken, shattered mess that was originally some of my most priceless decorations. Princess Pumpernickel was still contained safely in her box. A jolt of hope shot through me as I lifted her up. It just re the edges were dented, the plastic scuffed, sure, but the box was replaceable. As long as Princess Pumpernickel herself... Small hairline fracture ran across her neck. I gently shook the box, and her head slid across her body. Princess Pumpernickel was decapitated. I set the box gently back... Back at... Packed on that was a cheap figure. Wow, 
A cheap figure sold for so much money. Jesus. Laughter bubbled up in the back of my throat, but what came out was more of a strangled sob. This one thing! I just wanted to do this one thing! I grabbed a pillow and flung it across the room, not sure whether I wanted to curl up in a ball and cry or go beat the crap out of something. I couldn't do anything right! Hana? Hana, are you in there? <laughs> Gerard, is, is that you? Are you okay? I turned to muffle my sobs, wiping my face clear of tears, and stood to get the door. Wait, Princess Pumpernickel, what would he do if he, if he saw I destroyed her? One of three copies in the world. He would never forgive me. Hang on! I dragged all the debris from my collapsed shelf into a pile and glanced around for a place to put it. Anna, Anna what's going on? He seemed really frantic, but why? I couldn't put the stuff in the trash without leaving scraps behind, nor could I push it under my bed. Anna grabbed a blanket and tossed it over the pile, poking at it under it, poking at it until it looked like maybe it was some kind of quirky decoration. Anna, Anna, please, I just want to talk to you. I'm worried. He was worried about me. That was so funny. I almost hard to laugh. For some reason, when I cried, I was also much more likely to laugh. I cleared my throat and peered into the mirror. My eyes were only slightly pink, and my nose running just a little. You wouldn't notice, right? Hana! Hana! <laughs> I'm coming! I grabbed a tissue and blew my nose and finally opened the door. Lightly. Just enough to see Gerard so, so he couldn't see much of me. What's going on? Hana, what's going on? What are you talking about? Why are you here all of a sudden? Why are you quitting the tournament all of a sudden? Talk went like a jolt through my spine. Of course. Should have guessed. Shane lived with Gerard and he also pretty much hated me. Wouldn't take a brain surgeon to realize one of the first people he'd tell was Gerard. Well, well about that, I... I hadn't had time to come up with a story either. My gaze dropped to the floor as I tried to come up with something. Gerard made a face. You don't want to tell me the truth? <gasps> no, it's not that. It's just that I I need. I glanced inside my room, gaze land on, my gaze landing on Mr. Bunny. We go home. Anna. Anna. Is it that apparent? <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You were a terrible liar too. You're a terrible liar. Can I come in? I guess. I stepped back and let Gerard into into the room, my mind still still spinning for some kind of explanation. Nothing. There was nothing to explain my sudden change of heart. Biting my lip, I changed tactics. Where have you been for so long? Huh? What are you talking about? Why haven't you been around for lunch or class or anything? It seems like you've been upset about something. No way! No, I'm not upset! Of course I'm not upset! He seemed genuinely surprised that I reached this conclusion. So surprised it almost made me angry. Really? really? Because you've been ignoring me as if you were upset. It's not surprising I reached that con reached that Anna. conclusion. Anna. Is that why you decided to leave the tournament? I I thought you thought I didn't want you on the team? It's not at all. No. No, of course not. Of course it's not why. What kind of worry wart do you take me for? <laughs> You're not a worry wart? I mean, Gerard scanned my room. Suddenly, I realized it was his first time here. I stifled the urge to smooth out my bed and hide the papers left out of my desk. On my desk. Doing something that like that would only draw more attention to the fact that I had something to help. Anna, your shelf is broken. Do you need help fixing it? He pointed to the shelf above my desk, which still hung vertically following the destruction it wrought. <laughs> no, that's fine! I, cr I crossed to my desk, trying to block the view of my broken shelf with my tiny frame. Gerard's eyes traveled from the shelf to me to the blanketed pile next to me. Uh... What's that? Immediately, tears pricked my eyes. Nothing, it's nothing! Nothing, but you seem really sad about it. Uh... Are you sure I can't help? Gerard was staring at me with large puppy dog eyes. All sincerity and compassion. Slid to the floor, the energy draining from me. I was just trying to help you find Princess Pumpernickel, but...
I pulled the blanket off the pile, grabbing the box on top. I, but I decapitated her and ruined it. Now you're going to be so mad at me. And I promised Wallet I wouldn't be in the tournament in exchange. So now it's all ruined. <laughs> all the stress of the day finally caught up with me and I started sobbing right there on the floor. I didn't want to see his face. I didn't want to see him, but... Vera pulled me into a gentle hug. Hana, <laughs> it's alright. It's okay. You don't have to feel bad. You promised to... You promised to quit the tournament just to get me Princess Pumpernickel? I think that's the nicest thing anybody has ever done for me. Really? Is it? <laughs> of course it is. It makes me kind of happy that you'd go so far from me. But you definitely shouldn't ever go so far from me. I'm not worth giving up your dreams. But I wanted to repay you. Because you're always taking care of me and doing things for me. And I de don't deserve it at all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Who says you don't deserve it? I... Why don't you deserve it? Memories from the past trickled into my mind. I was cold, I was cruel. I was completely despondent. I was somebody I was ashamed of being. I'm not a good person. <laughs> Ger Gerard let out a hearty laugh. His shoulders shaking against me and jostling my head. You're not a good person? Would a bad person try so hard to get me this figure? Or to help her team win the tournament? What a bad person have so many people around her who cared for her? Would a bad person let my drool all over her just so she wouldn't wake up? You're kind of silly, Anna. Maybe. I wasn't completely convinced. Compared to Gerard, I was Scrooge. I, promise. I wouldn't be doing so much for you if I thought you were a bad person, Hana. I wouldn't like you so much if I thought you were a bad person. Gerard! Gerard leaned over and picked up Princess Pumpernickel from the floor, examining the box and figure with a collector's critical eye. A brief second his eyes shot wide, then he grinned. I don't think you have to worry about the tournament either. What? what? Why not? <laughs> this is a fake. What? What? And a really obvious one, too. For one, Princess Pumpernickel is a deep plum color, the color of royalty, not this delicious looking brown shade. Also, her crown is gold, not silver. <gasps> but... I... but... Mm. Wallet. Here's the thing. We made a deal for the, for the real, bona... F bona... Bonafide Princess Pumpernickel, didn't you? See what I mean? You don't have to keep up your end of the deal. Wallet didn't keep his. You think so? Huh. More than just think so, I'll make sure of it. Uh. Wallet! Gerard, my hand in his, shoved up, opened the cafeteria doors, and bellowed out into the busy room. Uh -oh. Yes? While his eyes slipped from Gerard to me, and realization dawned across his face. Uh-oh. Come with us! The cafeteria was st still and silent as Wallet scooted his chair out from the hidden block table and crossed to us. Gerard opened the door for him, and we stepped out into the... I think you know why we're here. Um, yes. I think I do. I just wanted to let you know that since Princess, since your pumpernickel figure was a fake... I just wanted to let you know that since your pumpernickel figure was a fake, Helena is not obligated to follow her side of the deal. Uh, I can't believe you would do something like this. What? Fake? It's not a fake. Yeah, whatever. Of course it was a fake! Princess Pumpernickel's figure is supposed to be purple! What? What? But... <laughs> you should just come clean. I already know. So what's the point of pretending you didn't know you didn't do it now? But I really thought. Uh... Well, I'll dust the ground with the shoe. Gerard sighed. Hey, Hana. Hana, I'm going to leave this up to you. You were the one he victimized, so it's up to you how you want to deal with it. We can we can tell the others, or we can ask Wallet to leave the tournament, or or. Well, how do you want to do this? I want to load, I want to save. Um, well, it's pretty clear that he didn't know it was fake. Well, did you seriously not know? It was sent- I was sent it by a fan. They said it was the real deal, so... 
I just assumed it was, and I knew you and Gerard were looking for it so long. It was stupid of me to ask you to leave the tournament, that's for sure. But I thought... But I honestly thought we were, we were both going to benefit from it. Uh. Walid, you're, you're really stupid. Uh. I know. I guess we'll see you in the tournament tomorrow, then. I guess so. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, 20 tournament points. I guess so. <laughs> Thanks for hearing me out, you guys. It's no problem. It was only right. Well, it's start for me to, me to Gerard. A small wind blew, stirring up leaves from the ground. Um... Honestly, I kind, of <laughs> I kind of hope you guys win. You deserve it. Then he was gone. How many points do I have? 20. Might be enough to win. I don't know. Finally, the day of the tournament dawned. The day that was so, so important, we were willing to throw all, away almost everything for it. So important that we sacrificed parts of ourselves just for the chance to succeed. I shook the thoughts out of my head. Why was I being so dramatic this morning? Just a single event, sure. It decided whether I joined the Normal Boots Club or not. The sigh I pulled out my uniform. Honestly, I was glad I was almost over. I stepped out into the fresh spring air, taking a deep breath. My event was one of the first, so it had to be earlier than most. I set my shoulders and started across campus. The arcade at which the tournament was being held was much smaller than I expected. I felt like I had some I'd find some kind of convention, but instead it was a small local arcade built with machines. Smaller rooms split off, which were probably where the inv individual competition would competitions would take place throughout the day. If I'm not mistaken, Gerard's um, event would be first, and it would t take, like, the entire day. Few people milled about the space, generally older folks with, in their 20s and 30s. I glanced the ag at the agenda in my hand and made my way to one of the back rooms. When I entered the competition room, I found two, two chairs on an elevated platform, a computer and a projector sitting between them. Ian sat in one of the chairs, looking bored out of his mind. Ian! Hey. By the time you showed up, I was starting to get worried you died. <laughs> Aw, that's sweet of you to be concerned. Is it? Yeah. I got into the chair next to him. A man came over to me to check my name and club affiliation. I said it was a member of the Normal Boots Club, a small church of pride making me sit up straight as I did. There were chairs lined up for people to watch us compete, and to my surprise the entire room soon filled. I searched the crowd to find the guys. There they were! They came to support me! All of them! I smiled, exci I smiled, excitement flooding through me, and then I was struck with terror. It was nothing like the thr- of failing in front of all the people you cared about. As I stared worriedly into the crowd, a blur of movement caught my eye. Walter was sitting with, with the rest of the Hidden Block Club, looking distinctly uncomfortable. I lifted a hand and waved to him. He returned half-heartedly. We sat together, neither of us making any form of small talk, until finally the lights around us dimmed and the projector started up the main menu of Dumby Doom's, Re Dumby Doom's Revenge on screen. It was time to start. As the MC began his introduction and explained the rules of the game, Ian turned to me, a smirk on his face. Sure you're ready for this? Yeah! You bet I am! Ready to go? The man turned to us, Ian and I nodded. Then, three, two... One, start! The game began. I immediately clicked to fill my screen with two more lines of blocks. Ian began working with what he had. I scanned the blocks for the pink hearts, eliminating one by them one by one, making combos where I could. I still wasn't advanced enough to make plan tons of combos ahead of time, but I could make it much more likely for combos to happen through probability. Pinks were all but gone. Green leaves were next. Nobody even started flipping at the top of the screen. Ian must be comboing, which meant I had a few seconds before those blocks would fall. I set up a combo on top of the screen and started eliminating the orange blocks below it. Then it happened. A six combo jumped out at me from on the screen. My eyes crossed as I stared at it in shock. I just had to move the top block over one space. Then, as quickly as I saw it, it vanished. The blocks looked normal again. You're dead! These blocks fell upon my humble kingdom, and I slipped the combo into place. Two, three, four combo, five combo, six combo, seven combo, eight combo! 
Sion's attack converted into blocks and hovered above mine. I set up several more combos and waited for them to fall. Ten combo legendary. Gumby Doom fired out rainbows over Ian's zone and then blocks. So many blocks they didn't come in a chunk. They came in a torrential downpour all over Ian's side, sliding from left to right and back again. Ian blinked, his hands and eyes moving frantically over the screen. I wasn't sure he had ever seen something like that before. I sure hadn't. I continued to combo while this was happening, but at this point there was no need. Ian's screen filled up. He kept trying to make combos until the very end, but game over. That was it. I won. I stared dumbfounded at the screen in front of me. Ian's mouth hung open. The room was silent. I might still get a good ending. Then. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, Hana. Oh, yeah. I knew you could do it. <laughs> I glanced up to see the room applauding all of it, even the hidden block club. The announcer was gaping at the screen. I I've never seen a score that high. Certainly, I was red as a tomato. I said to climb down off the platform. <laughs> Not so fast. Ian stepped in front of me, grim as always. I praised myself for, the for his infamous sarcasm. <laughs> but to my surprise, he laughed. Hana. That was a hell of a game, Hana. That's exactly what I wanted from you. He held a hand in the air, and I looked at it in confusion. Don't leave me hanging. Yeah. Oh! I high-fived him, and, I and he clasped my hand in his. Thanks, Hana. That was fun. Then he disappeared into the pressing... <laughs> disappeared into the pressing... Pressing crowd. We might still get a bad ending. Like this is this does not secure a good ending. Hana! Hana! <gasps> Hands grabbed my waist and suddenly I was lifted into the air, spinning around the room. <gasps> Gerard! Gerard let go and I collapsed onto him in the warmest bear hug I ever got. Boom, baby! <laughs> Boom, baby! You did it! <laughs> yeah, I did it! You're the best! I knew you could do it! You were all worried, but I knew from the very beginning that if you put your mind to it, you could succeed! <laughs> you're just a, you're just amazing, Hana. Right. Gerard. Oh, well, my event's up next! Will you come with me? Yeah! Of course I will! Gerard and I stepped into the main arcade room, searching for his event spot. We were, luck we were lucky your event was, one was the first one! Really? Really? Why? <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to see your event if it was any later! Jordan and I stepped into a rather small, rather small, almost closet-like room. Two separate TVs were hooked up to old Nintendo 64 boxes. Jeff sat in, sat in a chair in front of one TV set, watching a game's intro sequence. Something about backpack birds. I knew it, Banjo Kazooie. Play on repeat. That is the completion game, like the collectathon. Aside from those chairs, there was a little room to sit. Or even just even stand to watch them. That's not surprising. Jeff and I will probably be here for an for a few hours. Our friend will will be the last to finish what? up. A few hours? Completed. Completed. Well, more like several. At least six. <gasps> six? Hey. Hey, dude. Ready to get the show the show on the road? Just about. <laughs> Good, because I'm not about to go easy on you. Right. I'm not going easy on you either. Um, you're not planning on watching the whole thing, are you? Yeah. Of course, I want to watch you play and support you. Really? Are you sure it's going to be a long event? I don't want you to get bored. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be that bad. Jordan and Jeff took their seeds in a few minutes. With almost no ceremony, the MC counted down and the event started. Uh-oh. Gerard might lose. At first, it wasn't that bad. I was on the edge of my seat, watching Gerard take the lead in the in the first level. Jeff exploited the glitch that allowed him to skip to the front second level first, so he was the so he was the lead. Then Gerard did a different glitch that allowed him to jump to the fourth level without collecting things in the third. I mean marvel at each new jump, glitch and show off of show off skill, from the precise timing to the multitude of level restarts and the other glitches they exploited just to make it possible. Finally the day wore on. Occasionally other members of the club would pop their heads in to see how things were going. Still happening. Still going. After a while, Jeff and Gerard start narrating their moves, as if they were giving some kind of performance. My eyes slowly drooped. Couldn't be going for on much longer after all. Hana! What, huh? What happened? Is it over? 
not over. We're at the ha halfway break. <sighs> halfway break? <laughs> I told you didn't. Di I told you you didn't have to watch. No, no, I have to. At this point, this, this war. If you say so. But while you're doing battle, have this. Put a sm put a small water ball bottle and a wrapped sandwich into my hand. <laughs> this is lunch. Don't forget to take care of yourself. Then he was back into the game. Boom, baby. Heck yeah! I did it! I jolt to alertness. Jart stood with his arms raised to the sky, Jeff sitting in disbelief at his side. What? I've never seen an that exploit before. How did? Oh, yeah. I found it myself. You discovered a new exploit? <laughs> hey, I had to give you a run for your money somehow. Hey. Gerard, you did it! I ran to Gerard, but the MC just glared at us. Would you please move to the next room? We have tournament results to announce. Already? We were the the last event. Woo! We were the last event to finish up. Come on, let's go. Just before we left the room, Gerard glanced back at Jeff. Hey. Man, aren't you coming? Together, Jeff, Gerard, and I met up with the others in the main room. <laughs> Man, that took you forever. Could it be any worse? Don't give me that, Shane. Finally, the MC climbed on stage. It was time to learn who won. And the winner of the 2015 South Southwest Tournament is... The Normal Boots Club! Yes! I screamed and clapped, and we swarmed on stage. The poor MC didn't know what hit him. As we celebrated on stage, Paul grabbed the microphone. All right. I would like to take this moment to thank the fans, our families, but most of all... The newest member of the Normal Boots Club, as decided unanimously by all of us, Anna Mizuna. Unanimously? Yeah. By all of us. Hands pushed me to the front of the stage. Something soft draped over my shoulder. Here you go. You deserve it. My very own Normal Boots jacket. Yay! I did it! Yeah! You did! When celebration were over and we were all off stage, Gerard took my hand in his. Anna... I know I haven't been around much recently. I think I was causing you a lot of stress because of this. Just between us. But I have something to show you. Will you come with me? <laughs> of course. Gerard let me in, let me to Primrose House, where we stopped in front of my dorm room. Um. Gerard, why are we at my dorm room? <laughs> because, like I said, there's something I want to show you. He turned to my door, about to open it, and we whirled back. And he whirled back to me. First, but first. Close your eyes. Hmm. It's a surprise. Obediently, I closed my eyes. I felt a brief rush of air as I assumed Gerard waved his hand in front of my face, making absolutely sure I wasn't peeking. Gerard gently took my hands and led me into the room. <laughs> Can I open them? No, no, no. No, 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 not yet. He dropped my hands. Wait here. The faint rustling as Gerard started moving. Something from my room. Now can I open them? All right, now. <gasps> Gerard! Do you like it? I... I've never seen so many paper cranes in all my life. Remember that story you told me about your mom and about the little Hana? I think it's time that little Hana stops giving herself a hard time. You mean? Uh -huh. There's 999 cranes here, and it needs just one more. Gerard placed a square cut of decorative origami paper in my hand. Would you do the honor honors? Slowly, delicately, I folded my thousandth paper crane. And that, and that makes a thousand! Gerard. Gerard, this is amazing. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but I wanted to surprise you. During lunch and after school, I went to the dorms to learn how to fold paper cranes. It took me a while to get, even get it right, so it was a good thing I didn't, like, force him to tell me what he was doing. It took me a while to even get it right. Once I finally learned how to make them nicely, I got to work. And now? I'm not so well, sure. I know I'm nothing special, but, but I was kind of hoping... That we could be together as a couple. What? 
N nothing special? No. You think you're not nothing special? You're the kindest, most caring, coolest person I know. You stand up for yourself and what you'd like unconditionally, and you're always so, so... Don't ever let me hear you're nothing special again. Does that mean... Yeah. Of course it does. Yes, let's be together. Really? Really? I jumped into Gerard's arms and, to my surprise, as well as his, kissed him. Ooh, Hana. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, a voice clip. Whoa, Hana! <laughs> I might be the completionist, but you've completed me. Jirai. Top notch writing. Gerard. Now, if you don't mind, I'll take seconds. Gerard. Ray was one of the nicest people I'd ever met. Together, I knew we could make each other happy. And fine princess Pumpernickel. As long as Gerard was by my side, I knew I could handle anything. I knew it. Best end! <laughs> Woo! Best end! There is definitely not just one route to take to the best end, apparently. Well, I guess Shane has only one, like, way to get it right, and the rest is all wrong. But, you got it. Best end. In one try. Thank you guys all, mo uh, all so much for watching. We're gonna fi uh, look at this little credits scene. I hope the sound is not desynced this time. Might be. All that music done by Saya Pimp, Gar Garrett Williamson, Colin Klang, and Zurachi. Mm -mm -mm. Be -do -do. Knocking sounds by their respecting knockers. Respective. <laughs> and then final little scene. Night falls, Gerard and I officially cemented our relationship. The reactions from people around us uh, were, as expected, unsurprising. Whoa! You two are dating? Whoa! I'm shocked! <laughs> it's about time we gotta move on, Hana. I'm happy for you guys. No, really. Whoa. Aw, BBG! We gathered, to g we gathered together. All of the paper cranes and arranged them into families, piling them around, around my room until they resembled my own itty bitty kitty collection. Hey, Hana. Would you ever be interested in starting your own IBK collection, Hana? <laughs> Would I? I thought you'd never ask. But even after all of that, we, as we snuggled down to watch a movie, one question kept niggling itself at my side. Gerard. Gerard. What's going on? Yes, my dear Hana. How did you manage to get all these cranes into my room? Well... Well... About that... <gasps> How many of these damn cranes did Gerard fold? So Please, can you do me... Please, can you do me one teensy tiny favor? 
it'll make Rana really happy. I swear. I swear if Gerard ever asks me to do anything for him again, I'll defenestrate him without a second thought. He's gonna owe me the big time. Big time, you hear me? Big time! Asagao Academy, Normal Boots Club. I feel like that took like an hour. I was like, that was the shortest stream ever. I'm not gonna stop right now. What shall we do right now? Shall we move on to another route or shall we play something else? <laughs>